Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> So we put the air fryer to the ultimate test in part one. And to be quite honest, the machine passed the test. We tried eight unique recipes and we got some incredible results, but I wanted to keep pushing the limit and see how far we could take this air fryer. So in part two, I've got eight more unique recipes for you. We've got new techniques, new flavors, and a bunch of experiments to really see what the air fryer is capable of. So in part one, I told you what an air fryer actually does, but I saw in the comments section, a lot of people were debating on why you would actually need one of these things. And I think it boils down to three main points. Number one is convenience. Just like the microwave in the 70s, at least in America, we like convenience. We like our cooking to be easy. We like our cooking to be quick. And that's what this thing can provide. And to be honest, when you're cooking for one to two people, you don't really need a full size oven. It's a little overkill it's gonna take a long time to heat up. You're probably wasting energy. So I think people really like the idea of getting a convection oven all in this small little package. Number two is safety. The air fryer just feels like a safe product and I think people really like that. I was talking to my friend in this building and she lets her six-year-old use this thing every single morning to cook breakfast. Of course, this thing can get really hot and you need to take proper safety precautions when using it, but it does almost feel like a, a little computer rather than like a full gas appliance and the fact that you're not using gas and this thing is eventually going to shut off it has a timer on it feels just a little safer than using a bigger appliance. And number three is health reasons. This thing is called an air fryer, so it's supposed to replace steep frying, I guess, which it doesn't replace frying in oil, but you can get really good, delicious, crispy results in your food with just a small amount of oil or fat. All right, so the first recipe, we're gonna try churros. And of course, churros generally are deep fried, so we're gonna be air frying them. I've seen recipes online, uh, but this is definitely an experiment for me. We're gonna wing it and see how good churros are in the air fryer. To make churros, you actually have to heat up the batter. So I took a medium pot and added one cup of water and half a cup of butter with two tablespoons of sugar. And I melted that together on a medium heat. And once everything's melted together, you're gonna keep bringing that up to temperature until you start to see a very gentle boil. And once you see those bubbles, you can turn the heat down to low. And then I added in one cup of flour and a pinch of salt to really bring out the flavors of the churros. And I just whisked that together until it started to clump up. And then one at a time, I added in my three eggs until everything was nice and incorporated. And rather than having a batter as the final result, you can see it thickens up so much that it's more of a warm dough. And you can just take that dough and put it into some type of piping bag. I used a Ziploc bag with a little piping tip in the corner. Malfunction, this just exploded because this tip is too small and the batter's too thick. So, what to do, what to do. This right here I just found is a funnel. Uh, it's a little bigger of a tip. Not meant for this, but I'm gonna try that. So you don't get the classic edges, but it worked out. More like little hoop blocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll taste good. <laughs> Let's actually go 380 for six minutes. See what happens. So this right here is something that Alex made for her cruffin recipe. Check out the block. Yeah, this is the um, this is pistachio sugar. Thank you. So you use this for the top of your cruffins. Yep. I figured great use for the leftovers. We're gonna roll the churros in this pistachio sugar. Very interested in what's going on here. Oh. Okay. They cooked. They're not. Well, well, you know what, I'm gonna turn them over. Back in for like two more minutes. Make that three. Mm, three more minutes. Oh yeah, much better. Nice and firm. I mean, they don't look like churros to say, but I bet they taste like them. They I, look like poops. They, they look like garlic like breadsticks to me. <laughs> Cuff cheese. <laughs> they look exactly like garlicky breadsticks you'd get at Olive Garden or something. All right, let's try the garlic sticks. <laughs> Those are pretty damn good. Do you think they? Really good. Do you think they could cook a little longer? Yeah, need to cook a little bit longer. Okay. It has a good um, like shell. Mm-hmm. And also for someone who like didn't think this was gonna work, 
Good you didn't job. think it was going to work. No. Yeah. You were like, we're doing churros <laughs> in the air fryer? I'm like, yeah, we're doing churros. <laughs> All right, so we're moving on to ribs again. Another experiment. I'm gonna try to get them tender. Slow cooked barbecue ribs in the air fryer. So I bought about two pounds of baby back ribs, the perfect amount to fit in the air fryer, and I just patted the ribs dry. All right, so this is where all the spice, spice mixes go from past videos, and I know there's some type of barbecue one over here. It's either one of these, maybe we'll mix these together. I have no clue what these are from or what's in it but both of them taste good. We're gonna mix them together and we're gonna use it for the ribs. So of course just use whatever barbecue spice mix or whatever spice mix you want. Once I had my spice mix, I generously coated the ribs and wrapped them up in tin foil and they were ready for the air fryer. All right, this one is a total guess. I'm gonna start off 350 at 30 minutes and we'll just see what happens from there. It's still a little tough. Back in for, let's just do another 350 for 30 minutes. So after another 30 minutes in the air fryer, the ribs were still a little tough. The connective tissue hadn't broken down quite enough. So I turned the air fryer down to 320 and put them in for another 25 minutes. All right, so you can see it pulled away just a little bit from the bone, so that's a really good sign. It's cutting a lot better too. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. We're gonna baste this with barbecue sauce and then throw it back in there. All right, we're basted. We're going directly on the rack. All right, let's see what happens. Let's just stay with 350 for 10 minutes. All right, so those have only been in there for a few minutes. Check them out. I don't want it to burn. Wow. Oh my God. I think those might just be ready. So it's not fall off the bone tender, but those look incredible and my mouth is watering right now. Oh my God. Oh my God. They're tender. They're perfect. They're really soft. Somehow, like, I'm just punching in numbers into this thing. <laughs> like, oh, well, let's hope that works. It's an air fryer. I don't know how this necessarily converts, but I'm just using intuition and feeling it. And these ribs, like. Also, I was worried the sauce would burn. It's not, it's good. Yeah, incredible. But I am impressed with these. I wanted to try bacon in the air fryer, which is just something I've always been interested in. How does bacon hold up in this thing? But just bacon alone is kind of boring. So I wanna see if I can cook potatoes in the bacon grease at the same time in the air fryer. Again, this is a complete experiment. Uh, so let's see what happens. So the concept here is that the bacon goes on this rack and then there's just a little bit of space under there. I've got these small potatoes. Obviously they won't fit, but I'm gonna slice them up really small put them under there then the bacon renders out while it renders out that grease cooks the potatoes so first we got to cut the potatoes so they actually fit under there all right we got our bacon and our potatoes under there set it for 360 for 10 minutes all right 10 minutes whoa okay let me see i don't even know if we need to flip this i mean here's the thing that's perfect bacon and you don't have to flip it because it's circulating all around. I'm gonna pull the bacon, but let's see what's going on with the potatoes because I can continue cooking the potatoes. Whoa. Wow, they're basically just swimming in grease right now. I'm just going to cook these for like another 10 minutes, just like that. Or do I now put those on the main tray? I think you can put them on the main tray. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, curveball. We're gonna just transfer these to the main tray so we can get crispy all around. This is kind of cool. It's almost like they, um, what's the word? It's the French term. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. God, confit. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. basically like they confit, and now we're gonna get crispy. This is a two for one, my friends. 370, 10 more minutes. Looks like perfect bacon. And I mean, you could, you know, crumble that up, put it in the potatoes, but. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's good. All right, 
right, 10 minutes. Ooh. And all they need is just a little salt. They're good. They're like roasted potatoes. I think you could go a little longer, get mm -hmm. them a little crispier. What do you think? I like them. Yeah, you like I feel them. Like they're they're just really good, good roasted potatoes. I guess a, a nice little two for one right there. Some roasted bacon potatoes with your crispy bacon. All right, so we can parlay this uh, bacon one into the next one, which is popcorn. I want to experiment with popcorn in the air fryer and we can use the bacon grease to coat the popcorn. Alex over here is worried like she was worried about the churros. <laughs> she doesn't believe the air fryer has the capabilities mm -hmm. to, to, pop to pop popcorn. That's what, uh, that's what we're here to do. So the only step I did for the popcorn was I took the bacon grease that was left over in the air fryer from all that bacon fat rendering out, and I poured that over the popcorn kernels and just mixed that up until they were coated. All right, so I didn't think they'd fall through the crevices. I thought they were big enough, but some did, which will be very interesting if they pop. But I think we're just gonna throw that in the air fryer, set it for the maximum. 380 is the max. And we'll obviously hear pops. All right, it's popping like crazy, but it's also smoking a little bit. So just wanna... Yeah, see. Oh, jeez! <laughs> Whoa! No stopping it. A lot of kernels still left over, which is not a good look. Mm -hmm. The popcorn is really good. So I guess overall, I don't know. Would you call it a fail? Yeah. Okay, fail. Yeah, much easier to make popcorn in a pan because they're all gonna cook evenly. It's not gonna take 10 minutes. Some kernels were burnt, which is a problem. You can't just have like five kernels completely burned to smithereens. That's no good. All right, our first air fryer fail. So one thing I have not done in the air fryer yet is baking. Have, have we baked? Apple pie. We did the apple pie, okay. Little different, something that like rises. I haven't baked something like a muffin or in this case, a banana bread. So that's what we're gonna do. Just make a really simple banana bread recipe that I make all the time, but try it in the air fryer. See if anything's different. To make the banana bread batter in a medium sized bowl, I mashed up two overly ripe or ripe bananas, whatever you have, until they are nice and mushy. Then I added in a third of a cup of melted coconut oil, a third of a cup of maple syrup, Syrup, two eggs, and I whisk together all of those wet ingredients until they are fully incorporated. Now moving on to the dry ingredients, I added in one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup of oats, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh yeah, and at this point I realized I forgot the milk, so I added in a quarter cup of milk, but I would have added those in with the wet ingredients. And then I stirred all of that together until it's fully incorporated, and then I added in my chocolate chips. But you can add Add in whatever you want. Not so great in this recipe, but I like the chocolate. Then I just greased up this little baking tin, something I knew would fit in the basket of the air fryer, and poured in my batter, and it was ready for some air frying. There she is. Now these things are pretty powerful, so rather than going 350, I'm gonna do 335. Again, just punching numbers at this point. So banana bread's usually around 50 minutes to an hour. Let's just do 30 minutes, see what happens. So it's been just a little over 15 minutes, but I'm just nervous. I need to give it a peek. What the? That's an explosion, see? Like Good these job. things just brown like crazy. I wonder if it's. Look at that oven spring. Look at that oven <laughs> spring, there you go. I wonder if it's done. Alex, can you tell me the internal temperature of banana bread, please? There's no way that's done. 194. We're at 127. We're slow cooking banana bread. 250 for the last 13 minutes. Let's check this again. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yes, we did it. Wow. Perfect. I mean, texture wise, just from the look and the feel of it, that's perfect. And the oven spring. Look at that thing. Shot off. Alex is the master baker, so it's got to get past her. I mean, it's really good. I like a banana bread that has a crust. Mm -hmm. Like, Me too. that 
is a firm crust. It gives it texture, and then the inside is just perfect. Yeah, it's not gooey, it's not undercooked. It's really good. What can't the air fryer do? Popcorn. Popcorn. <laughs> did we do any dehydrating last time? Yeah. Beef jerky. Okay, so we did a meat dehydration, but I've been wanting to test out fruit, just like a simple snack. I've seen apple chips done many times in the air fryer, so we're gonna test that out as well as bananas. For the apple chips, I first cored the apples and I do not suggest doing this technique at home, but I didn't have an apple core. So I made a few incisions with a knife and then I used a chopstick to pound out the core. So it was pretty sloppy, but it got the job done. And then I took a serrated knife and made thin slices with the apples. But if you have a mandolin, I would suggest using that. I just don't have a mandolin in the studio yet. So I just piled on the apple rings. So I'm gonna start it off. 320 for 15 minutes, and then I'll probably just have to keep turning them. So while the apple chips are going, I've got some bananas here. I wanna try out some bananas. I love dehydrated bananas, and I'm interested in what these do in the air fryer. So we're going in this one. Nope, <laughs> need the bottom piece. <laughs> After 10 minutes. So yeah, they're still soft. Oh, you see some are kind of getting crispy because they're thin, but I'm just gonna turn them around and just keep going. I might lower the temperature to 300. These are kind of Oh wow, those look amazing. All right, they came off, they look good. Definitely spray it though, it'd be much easier. You can see some damage there. Let's give it a try. Alex is allergic to apples, so. But I love bananas. But she loves bananas. Those are awesome. Mm. Those are awesome. Mm -hmm. These are good. All right, so these are done. They're already starting to dry out, but you just want to make sure you get them on a rack so they have a place to cool down, and as they cool, they'll get crispy. We've got different textures, different doneness, so I'm going to sample a few. Like this one's still a little squishy. I like the different textures in that one. Let's try a really crispy one. The burnt flavor is no good. <laughs> the, bur <laughs> the burnt flavor is no good. I think the key is to lower the temp in the air fryer um, and use a mandolin so they're even, because once they burn, uh, yeah, that one's not burnt and it's great. It tastes like a really good apple chop. One thing I haven't tried to do in the air fryer is see how this thing actually fries stuff. I've done so many recipes, but how does a recipe like tempura that should be deep fried hold up in the air fryer? So I'm gonna use a tempura style batter to make some buffalo cauliflower. And I started off by just chopping up the florets of my cauliflower until I got nice little pieces. To a bowl, I added one cup of flour. Then I sprinkled on a few tablespoons of the spice mix that I use for the ribs, just to add another dimension of spiciness to the cauliflower and just a little bit of salt and then I started whisking in some ice water until I had a nice smooth batter. Alright, very interested in how this one goes. We're gonna go 360, 12 minutes to start. Alright, let's see what's going on in here. It's getting a crust. It kind of looks like tempura. That was the idea, the tempura batter. But I think maybe jacking it up real quick. Yeah. And just trying to get it a little crispier. 370 for just three minutes. So these came out pretty good. I'm just gonna break them out. They did stick a little bit, but nothing too crazy. Um, so what I have here is just a little bit of hot sauce, <laughs> butter, salt, and pepper. Classic buffalo sauce. Just make make sure it's really emulsified. Like that, and then we're gonna take these. It was spicy. Yeah, spicy. Not, um, not, not bad, not crispy, but it's, it's not bad. It's not okay. bad, not crispy. <laughs> A little crispy. Yeah, I just don't think you're gonna get the results of deep fried oil with that. All right, we tried.
All right, I am very excited for this next one. And I figured making regular pizza didn't make sense to like make a, a thinner pizza in the air fryer, but it felt like it was built for a deeper dish, a deeper, a de <laughs> it is a deeper dish built for deep dish. So we're gonna do a deep dish style or Sicilian style pizza. And it's gonna start off with some homemade dough. For the pizza dough, I used my trusty overnight fermented pizza dough recipe that you can find in my Ultimate Bread Baking Handbook. If you click the link right above or down in the description, you can get a free PDF guide of the handbook that has this pizza dough recipe in it, as well as all my favorite bread recipes featured on Pro Home Cooks. All right, so our dough has slow proofed in the fridge overnight. Gives it more flavor. Looking really good though. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray that with some olive oil. And we're gonna lay this in there. There should be some room to expand. I wanna give it a little extra rise before I par-bake it. All right, so it's proofed for just about an hour. It's nice and soft. It's expanded just a little bit and it should puff up a little more. So what I'm gonna do now is par bake this thing. 320, because it's convection. Let's do six minutes. All right, let's see what's going on. All right, oh, puffed up. Check this out. Oh, it's okay. getting crispy. So I'm going to top it. Look at that beautiful topping action. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is jack this thing up to the max. Okay, it goes 400. Let's try five minutes. Let's see what that does. She's done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That is insane. Come on. Oh, I do have to just hit it with. Yeah. It looks so good. <laughs> it smells insane. Wow, so. It looks amazing, but surprisingly, it's a little soft on the bottom. It's doughy. I thought because we were getting that convection in there, it would be crispier. So a little disappointed in the bottom, but let's uh, let's give it a taste. That is a fat slice. It's more of a um, focaccia tasting. Um, needed crispiness on the bottom. Wanted the crispy. It tastes amazing. The top got crispy, but the bottom didn't get crispy. I almost want to keep working on that recipe to perfect it because there's got to be a way to get the bottom crispy and get the rest. Do you think rest. a thinner dough would have been better? Maybe. Okay. We can try I have more dough. We'll oh, give sure. it a try. What do we got? Oh, Jesus. All right, we're just gonna have a video on that. <laughs> <laughs>